guys, here's an at-home beam workout that you can be doing to keep up with your beam skills. So first we're gonna work on all of our balancing things, just staying in one spot. And you can do this on a floor beam if you have one, that's great. Otherwise, you can do it on a line and that works out just fine too. So first, we can try just balancing in releve. That is on our tiptoes. There you go. And then we can try balancing in on one foot. And as Ms. Vanessa is showing, we can do it in coupe, where you point your toe to your ankle and then trying the other foot, balancing in coupe. Next one we have is passe, pulling your toe all the way up to your knee and squeezing your belly in, and balancing on the other foot in passe. And you can try to time yourself on these or try to do 10 seconds of each, or really just set your own challenge. Um, next up, we have balancing with just one leg lifted in front. And then you can lift it to the side or lift it behind, which is called arabesque. And then we can try those on the other foot, lifting in front, to the side, and behind. And then we can put those all together and do what is called a rond de jean, where you lift in front and all the way through, back to the middle and around. And then she can go out in the opposite direction as well, starting in the back and coming all the way around, back all the way around. And she could do those on both legs as well. Um, for an extra challenge on all of our balancing activities, you can also try all of them in releve. So standing on your tiptoe and balancing in coupe, and balancing in passe. You could also try the ones with your leg lifted in front in releve, and to the side. Maybe, that was tricky. <laughs> and in arabesque in releve, and if you're really ambitious, you could try a Ron de Jean in Releve, but that might be tricky. <laughs> Want to keep you challenged at home. Our next balancing positions that we can practice are sitting down on the beam. So the first one is a tuck hold, the knees bent. Then you can do a pike hold, which we also call a V-sit, or you can do a straddle. And for all of these, you're going to have your hands in a butterfly, so they're right next to each other, and you can grab the beam to be steady. For a little bit more of a challenge, some other holds we can do are you can do a tuck hold facing sideways on the beam and trying to lift up your weight. Or you can do that in a pike. Or to get extra tricky, you can try it in more of a V position. Or you can try that in a straddle, which is also called a mana hold and is very tricky. Wow! Nice job, Miss Vanessa. For a little bit easier straddle variation, you can sit the other way on your beam and lift yourself up that way. Excellent. Next up, we have all of our walking variations for the beam. So starting off with just forward walks, we recommend airplane arms out to the side and staying nice and up tall. For a harder variation, Miss Vanessa is going to do each of our walks in releve on the way back. So on a beam this short, we recommend doing like at least three to five passes of each exercise that you do. We'll just show one. Then we have sideways walks. Again, arms out to the side, keeping your chest up. You don't want to bend over at all. In flat feet on the way there. And releve for a little bit more challenge. Whoop, that one's tricky. On the way back. And if you fall off, that's okay. We just get back up. Uh, next up, we have backwards walks. Same arms. Nice straight body, feeling for the beam behind you as you get to the end. We don't want to have to turn around and look. Oh, she's not there anymore, and then she knows to turn around. Or we can try them in releve. For releve, sometimes it's more helpful to pull your arms up to the sky, pulling you up nice and tall. Then we have our grapevine walks. Facing sideways, crossing in front to the side, behind to the side. Making sure that we do for in front and behind, because sometimes that one gets tricky and trying it in releve, in front and behind. Making sure for all the sideways things, you're not turning around, so you are leading with one leg on the way there and the other leg on the way back. Next, from all of our balances we practiced earlier, we can do all of those in walking shapes as well. So we're going to do coupe walks all the way down. Step, and she points her toe nice to her ankle every time. The lovely pivot turn at the end and then coupe walks in releve. Next up we have 
passe locks. Pulling the knee all or toe all the way up to your knee. And passe locks in releve. These are super great for when you learn turns later on. And we'll get to that. Next up, we have our kicks in each direction. So starting with forwards, kicking as high as you can, making sure both legs stay straight. I like starting these in on a flat foot anyway, just to make sure you're squeezing both legs super, super straight. And then on the way back, you can try it in releve. And then next up we have sideways kicks. For these, you want to make sure your knee is facing the ceiling. And you kind of kick at a 45 degree angle, it's not totally sideways. And then our sideways kicks in releve, making sure her hips are tucked under and like I said, knee is facing the ceiling. And then we can do backwards kicks, walking forwards, kicking backwards. Again, trying to make sure that back leg stays nice and straight. And you can do these in releve as well. And all of this stuff is really helpful for our leaps that we learn on beam later on. Next up, we have inchworms. Or you bend down and walk your hands all the way out. If you want an extra challenge, you can do a push up, but you don't have to, and then walking your feet. So if your hands are walking, your feet are still. And if your feet are walking, your hands are still. And then you can do that backwards, walking your hands to your feet and walking the feet back out, and hands to feet. Or, another variation of that is our bear crawls, trying to keep our legs nice and straight. This is great for learning to bear weight in the arms, getting ready for our handstands and donkey kicks. Um, and then backwards bear crawls as well. Making sure you're watching both hands and both feet land on the beam. Next up, we have bunny hops. Just like the Easter Bunny. We could do them forwards and since we're on a floor beam, hey, let's do them backwards too. That might be a little tricky on a high beam, but <laughs> on a floor or a line, it could be okay. Last up for our walks, we're going to try duck walks. So you're going to squat down. There you go, hands and hips. And try to stay nice and low. It's a good little workout for the legs. And then we can do them backwards on the way back, trying to keep your chest up as much as you can and really get your bottom all the way down to your heels rather than just having your legs a little bit bent. Awesome. All right, next up we have a little bit of skill work on beam. So first we're gonna work on our turns, which Miss Vanessa demonstrated some while we were doing the walking. But first up is our pivot turn. So both feet in releve. Start with your puzzle feet. Ankles are glued together and you spin. Make sure you're spinning towards your back leg because otherwise your legs get all crossed up and it doesn't work out very well. Very good. And you pivot there and back. We can also do our pivot turns in a squat position. Still in releve with both feet. Squat turn and squat turn back. Excellent. Next up we have our heel snap turns. These are balancing in coupe and we want to make sure we're doing outside turns. So whichever knee is bent, you're pulling that knee across your body or you're turning towards whichever leg you're on, your pinky toe of that leg. And these, you'll go in a full circle as opposed to narrow back, full circle. And you can do them in coupe, or you can do them in passe. And if all those are no problem, you could step down to the line, and you could try a regular half turn. I would recommend this more on a line. In passe, stepping right up to releve. 